my little degenerates is that time of the damn year it's time to talk about my top five favorite games of 2023 all right you know I, i've been procrastinating a lot on this video it was been supposed to come out but i just i was just like man this video mm -mm. this video is is gonna be hard to do man but I think I finally nailed it down. This is my definitive 2023 list. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you all enjoy this video. Because I was struggling so hard on this. But before we begin into my top five. And also honorable mentions. I do want to talk about 2023 in terms of gaming. 2023 in terms of gaming for me personally was the best and also the worst year of gaming. Um, I think Ben Starr, the voice actor of Clive Rossville, said it the best. Would you say 2023 is the best year for video games? Honestly, are we going to get serious? I think um, yes. It is an amazing year for video games to come out. I think it's not a great year for video games insofar as all of the layoffs. I think it's not great for that, and I think it, that does need to be spoken about at an event like this. I think we want to celebrate all of these games, but maybe there is something missing uh, because a lot of people who made those games are no longer working at those companies, and I think that also has to be respected. So yeah, 2023 is an astonishing year for the video games that have been made, but not necessarily for the industry that it reflects, um, and so I think that's a shame, uh, and hopefully this is the worst that it gets. I fear that it isn't, um, but I really hope that you know we the industry figures out a way of course correcting and allowing those people who've made these games that we are celebrating today to celebrate them as well and not be on you know the unemployment line and this is why i was so offended by jeff Keighley's game award show and not allowing these developers to talk and speak on the games that really they spent up to five plus years working on and only for them they get like told oh you're talking too much you should leave it really it aggravated me. So for this video, and for my top fives, I'm going to go on as much as the fuck I want because I really want to praise these developers and even the honorable mention category for their hard work and dedication. And as much as we bitch and complain about developers and get angry at developers for certain aspects of gaming, I really want this video to really really be a celebration of 2023's game so join me and together we're going to talk about these games and the first thing we're going to talk about is honorable mentions also also there will be timestamps in the description box below so if you have not and i repeat have you don't give a fuck about honorable mentions or any particular game or just want to see what is my game of the year the number one game of the year uh you can just skip through but Going into honorable mentions, again, honorable mentions to me are games that I played and probably either didn't beat, but I thought was really good, or I beat, but certain criteria made it not come into my top five games. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to start off by saying um, Mario Wonders was super fun. This is my first honorable mention super fun game you know it's it's mario you can't fuck up mario man it's like it's the crim out of crim all right the easiest platformer game to get right and nintendo once again just takes the formula they've had for millions of years for this franchise and just keeps adding new things this is a prime example of you don't need to reinvent the wheel you just need to add on the wheel and this game is fun. It's fun. I love how adorable the plants are. The plant, plants will say some stuff. I love the new power-ups you get. You turn into a fucking elephant. All right. And it's super fun. Super enjoyable. I enjoyed every minute of it. And I think the reason why I'm going to put in an honorable mention is because, simply put it, the Mario movie came out. And, you know, for those that probably haven't played a Mario game in a long time, this is a great way to get you back into uh, a Mario game. So, shout out to Nintendo. This was a fun game. The only reason is honorable mentions for me. I didn't beat the goddamn game, so it is what it is. Another honorable mention is going to go to uh, a DLC 
a DLC, yes, a DLC, uh, God of War Ragnarok Valhalla DLC expansion. Holy shit, I did not expect this DLC, and it was free, so I didn't think it was going to be anything. But holy hell, this DLC is so damn cool. It's a roguelike, and I don't, this is my first roguelike. I don't really play roguelike games like this. But one of the things I love what they did is that they added and incorporated a story into the roguelike, into this free DLC. I was like, what the hell? And then the coolest part, and this is the part that got me, is that it really fits the God of War aesthetic. Because it's Kratos reliving and re um, remembering all the shit he done in the past. And this DLC really honors the Greek mythology and making Kratos re textualize and relook at those key moments in the in the Greek mythology um, um, series. I love that. I thought that was so dope. There's enemies from the Greek mythology series that you that you could fight. It's so cool. I really gotta give um, the team really props for this. Like they didn't have to do this, but the simple fact that it's free is amazing. You know, like mwah, mwah. So for that, it gets an honorable mention. The only reason it's not on the top five is. It's a DLC for a game that came out another year, so I can't give it um, on my top five list. I, I just don't do that. I'm sorry. Just don't. Um, moving on to my next game, uh, Dead Space Remake. Holy shit. I was so blown away by this remake. Like, I really was impressed. And it's funny because originally I thought Callisto Protocol would have been the game that's like, this is Dead Space, and Dead Space is back, baby. And it's like, that game fucking sucks. But Dead Space Remake, oh my goodness. EA, um, oh my goodness. EA Motives, oh boy. That that Iron Man video game is going to be sick. I'm telling you right now, that Iron Man video game is going to be fun. Because these guys nail it. They nail every aspect of of Dead Space, the original Dead Space, but then elevates it to a little bit by like literally saying, well, let's take the inspiration that we took inspiration for. Let's go back to the original Resident Evil where you can run around the whole entire mansion and find puzzles and, and a lot different doorways that connects into different hallways into the Dead Space remake. And that was something that was never done in the original. The original was a uh, level base or chapter base. This said, fuck that. We're doing our own shit. And I'm just so proud of it. You know, this game was awesome. Through and through. Having Isaac talk was cool. The only reason it didn't make my honorable mention, uh, my top five, is simply put it, as much as I think that the remake is really good, um, there is another remake that I think blows it out of the water. All right, but it's still a good remake, and I think it's a good testament to how remakes can be if done correctly. And finally, my last, my last honorable mention is gonna go to a game that breaks my heart. That is in my honorable mention. It breaks my damn heart that this game is in my honorable mentions. Baldur's Gate Three. Oh my goodness, I feel like crying that I had to put it in honorable mentions. But I just have to. The game is fantastic. If you have not tried Baldur's Gate 3, you know, it's a reason why it's game of the year. All right. <laughs> it is really that good. I've had people sit there and say on on TikTok that this game is fucking boring and whatnot. And it's like, well, is you don't know nothing about games. You're so used to playing walking simulators and PS5 big explosion games that you don't know how cool this game is and I highly applaud people to play this game it is so cool the choice system is amazing it's like the developers thought of everything and if you just roll with what the game is offering you'll enjoy it man easily one of my favorite games but I just can't put it on the top five because I didn't beat it 
but it's so good. And I'm only 18 hours in, and I'm just like, still in Act 1, and I'm seeing new stuff all the time in this game. This game is fantastic. Shoutouts to um, Liberian Studios. These guys fucking killed it, man. Like, mwah. Wish them nothing but the best. Number five, number five, number five is gonna go to High Five Rush. Yes, Xbox fans. Uh, I really enjoyed an Xbox game. <laughs> I know it's very hard to believe that I enjoy Xbox games, but High Five Rush was really one of those games. I was just like, whoa, this game is made for me. It's literally a Saturday morning cartoon with lovable, well-designed characters with a DMC inspired combat mix in with fucking rhythm game like I've never played a hack and slash game like this before where it's a rhythm game but also a hack and slash so all your combos are like tied into the to the music and the rhythm of the of the beat and if you're just like hitting the the, the musical notes in the background perfectly you get bonus damage you can air dash and dash depending on the beat like I'm not even into like rhythm games I think I suck at rhythm games to be honest I have no rhythm <laughs> uh, but this game was a blast all right just a blast and just the way how they announced this game was also amazing like just tango game these you know the studio that gave us Evil Within and uh, Ghostwire Tokyo uh, come out of nowhere with a hack and slash game. And at first, people was like confused, but I was like, "Oh, this makes sense because these are ex Capcom devs, you know." And Shinji Mikami is is works on this shit, so it's like, of course, it was gonna be cool, and it's so much fun, like. Honestly, I hope that we're getting a sequel to this game because it is so much fun, so cool. The only issue I have with the game and why it's so low on my list is, again, I suck at rhythm. And I think the music personally did not touch me the way how it touched other people. Um, but I can easily see why this game got best audio design because the audio and the mixing is so incredible so incredible and this game is funny so funny there's some funny moments and funny gags that I was just dying laughing this game is like literally a love letter to early 2000s um, PlayStation early Xbox games you know PlayStation 2 early Xbox games and they don't make games like these no more all right this was like a blast from the past and i treasure this game so much and so for that it gets my number five spot on the list number four number four number four so my number fourth game is a little odd because i usually don't put games like this on my top five list but I just had to because I'm just so impressed. Street Fighter 6, man. Street Fighter 6 is... Oh my goodness. It's so fucking good. Alright? And this is only year one. Alright? So this is subject to change. By the end of the, the game a life cycle, it could be a piece of shit. I play fighting games that are like that. But, oh my god, I just have to put this game on, on number four because it is truly a comeback story I've ever seen, bro. Like, it, I don't need to tell you about the Dark Ages of Capcom, but man, this just, just was like a, a breath of fresh air, you know, tears of joy, you know. And the thing I love about Street Fighter VI, there's three things in particular, but the, but the number one thing I love about this game what it does for casuals this game unintentionally or intentionally finds way to get casual gamers who, who probably are not good at fighting games or probably don't play fighting games from a single player experience into multiplayer territory like 
that is incredible by just having their world tour mode and you pick your own custom character and you you know go around the city there's tons of references but then you go around the city and the game is unintentionally by its mini games and by its by its little mechanics are teaching you fundamental fighting game shit like it is impressive what this game does in terms of a single player content it is almost tear jerkingly good like i can't believe it that they thought of this shit like so many other fighting games need to take eyes on what these motherfuckers did over at capcom this is game changing all right in terms of how they handled the world tour mode and how they've handled like avatars like you can just make your own avatar and then take them online when you have custom moves and just battle your friends with custom moves and then maybe you made a custom move of a character and you're like huh you know what i i was in world tour mode and i really enjoyed ryu or or ken god oh god ken but now i'm like not comfortable with with ken's move based off of my avatar well, let me try playing a ken and you could take that experience and now go battle people on online or in person and it's and it's fucking amazing um this game just soundtrack and everything is fucking amazing graphically the character designs like finally characters have new slick designs everyone gets some new slick designs and i just think in terms of mechanics like the game has gives you so much options to deal with deal with people it's ridiculous so sometimes it feels a little overwhelming if you're not used to a fighting game it's so overwhelming on in terms of options you have but it's so well thought out so well good i just every day i just think about street fighter 6 and i and i sometimes bop my head to my favorite favorite um street fight um favorite um character selection screen um sideline I, I i sometimes will hum that shit oh my goodness like <laughs> like this game is fantastic from beginning to end and again modern controls it just again taking things that i just never thought in a million years capcom would do just doing it they're fucking doing it the simple fact that you can just do modern controls and characters that you probably weren't even interested in like like zangief a grappler you can play them now characters that you never could do motion controls with you could just play them now and granted they may lose some of their moves even some of the fucking um, tournament players are like, yo, these cat, this, this modern control shit is like really good. Why would I do the classic controls for these characters? And it's, it's so good. The game is so amazing. I, I can't speak nothing highly. Again, um, the only reason it's low on the list is pretty simple. I am concerned, you know, going into like, you know, the fewer seasons you know how will this game have a longevity wise like is it gonna teeter off or is it you know is, is are they gonna start adding bullshit that is dumb are they gonna take away that's the problem you run into when you do um fighting games you know every season is different and certain things will change and i don't know how that how that's gonna happen but we'll see um no <laughs> this one is a stupid complaint but i actually think it's a complaint now uh no damn um jukebox uh i really like some of the music like i love jamie's theme i love ryu's theme i love cammy's theme i love i i fucking love the fucking um online music and the fucking um character selection um music it's so good but man we need to get some street fighter fuck classic street fighter shit back baby we need to get it back and yeah street fighter 6 i don't know this, this shit is good but we need we need the original shit back um but also um yeah microtransactions of this game i'm not a huge fan of like 
the battle pass and how they've handled microtransaction. I don't like it. But besides that, Street Fighter 6, wow. Perfect. Keep it up, Capcom. Just keep doing you, bros. Number three, number three. Number three is going to be a, a hot take one. And people's going to lose their minds when I say this, but Final Fantasy 16 is fucking awesome. <laughs> this is my favorite Final Fantasy game. Um, this game is made strictly for me. Uh, it, it was like uh, Yoshi P and the whole Final Fantasy 16 team was like, uh, so, this is degenerate. You like hack, hack and slash? <laughs> and I was like, hmm, what did you say? Hack and slash? And they just showed me 16. <laughs> and 16 is fucking awesome, man. I love this game. Yeah, it has problems. Like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat this shit. This game is not going to be for everyone. And I fully admit that this game, Final Fantasy 16, is truly a divisive Final Fantasy game. You're either going to love this game or you're going to just hate it or not even think it's a Final Fantasy game. Me, personally, I think that's a silly thing to say that is not a Final Fantasy game because every Final Fantasy game is completely different. And also, uh, as you get further on to the story, especially near the halfway point, it becomes a traditional Final Fantasy story. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like, it's funny how people say it's not a Final Fantasy game, but it is. Like, literally, the story halfway through literally becomes like, hey, we gotta go defeat a fucking god. Like, <laughs> like, it's funny, but it is what it is. But the reason I love the game and why it's my favorite Final Fantasy game is because the game play is fucking awesome. Like, I love the combat system. The combat system is straight up a Devil May Cry combat system. It's like, you got jump cancels, you have... You have um, stingers, you have all these combat moves, you have your icon abilities that have different abilities. The Shiva icon ability and the Odin icon ability is fucking awesome. You can cancel out of moves can, uh, with your devil trigger, but later on you get Odin's um, move that he just uh, allows you to cancel out of any animation perfectly. It's like um, amazing the combat system when you get a fucking perfect dodge oh my goodness and Clive later on you get the, the, the accessory to give you um it it tur it gives you like a devil trigger uh, activation for like five seconds oh my god when he does that slide oh my god and you're doing it multiple times in a row oh this is the coolest shit. The combat is so good. Again, the set pieces, and this is the highlight of the game to me, is is the gods versus gods MO of this game. Like, like that to me is why I love Final Fantasy 16. The, the world of Final Fantasy 16 is so interesting with the war between different nations, all gathering for resources, backstabbing, like a lot of people say it's Game of Thrones. I would actually agree, but it's just like really fucking cool shit. But again, like the set pieces are fantastic. Like I went on a whole rant on my video. If you didn't watch that video, you need to go watch it because I literally go off about like in a good way. I go off about literally the Titan versus Ifrit bat boss battle. It's so fucking good. And that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It gets even more insane, more crazy. It, again, this is a fucking game made for me. Made for my weeaboo sensibilities, all right? This is a fucking cool ass game. And I love every minute of it until I have to do side quests. And that's the biggest reason why it's on number three. It's because the side quests and just sometimes the downtime of this game is trash. It is the most garbage shit. But then when I'm back into the saddle and I'm doing combos and I'm doing like 55 hit fucking combos and shit, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a fucking amazing game. And of course, 
Ben Starr, and I said this before, you know, a good voice actor can hold, make you really enjoy a game. Ben Starr, he's the fucking Chad. I said it before, he holds this game up by his head and is just running a fucking marathon at everybody, bro. But also, you know, my bad, my man Sid, with his fucking cool ass fucking voice, is also cool. But Ben Starr is like fucking killing it, and he's doing such an amazing job. You feel everything Clive feels at every given moment, and that's because the voice acting is so tight. This is the definition of how a voice actor can elevate uh, a, a material and. Ben just gets it. He gets it. I love this guy. And also, he's funny on, on Twitter or X, whatever fucking one you want to call it. So funny. But Ben Starr is just... Nah. 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 I can't say nothing more about this game. And the soundtrack? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my... Oh, my God. The soundtrack. Oh, my God. It is going hard. <laughs> Every single icon battle, the battle theme, bro, the main menu thing, bro, it is going hard for no reason. It was like, can we take a break, master? And the orchestra is like, no, we got to go even harder, even harder, even harder. <laughs> so this is why I love this game. This game is fucking fantastic. It's a Final Fantasy game made personally for me and I'm very grateful for that my runner-up for game of the year my number two would have to go to and I and I hinted this earlier in the video but Resident Evil 4 man Resident Evil 4 remake oh my goodness Capcom Capcom take Capcom please stop Stop. Why why you gotta make me change my pants twice a row in this video, man? You guys are some monsters over there. What what is Capcom smoking over there? Like, I didn't think these guys had the bones to make one of the coolest fucking remakes. I thought Resident Evil 2 remake was fucking dope. No, Resident Evil 4 remake is the creme de la creme of, of a remake. Alright? This is shit is on the same level of Final Fantasy 7 remake. They fundamentally took everything you loved about the original RE4 and just elevated, 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 elevated. I still love the original Resident Evil 4. Don't get me wrong, and I even think it's a little bit, uh, a little better in terms of like, like cutscene cinematics and whatnot. S very stylish. But my God, the gameplay of Resident Evil 4. I think my friend, one of my friends, summed up. Resident Evil 4 remakes gameplay so well. It is a John Wick movie. <laughs> it is a John Wick movie on steroids. All right. It is unrelentless action, unrelentless enemies coming at you in every way, and you barely feel like 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 you got every situation under control. But for some odd reason, you just manage with with your fucking blind luck just able to just get past the level and it's like jesus christ but it's so much fun man it is unrelentless in what it does and this is how a fucking remake should be man you know this is this is like uh, you know when a game is good is when after you done beat it you instantly want to go back and play it it on hard on a harder difficulty that's how you know a game is good man like, I, every minute, I fucking was like, this game is the fucking best game ever. I was literally in general smile throughout the whole time I was playing this game. Because I could not believe they were doing it. And as someone who was very hesitant on a remake, was like, no, don't touch my baby. This is Resident Evil 4. This is the Resident Evil game that got me into Resident Evil. Don't do it. Don't do it. For them to see, like, no, motherfucker, we're going to do it, and we're going to execute every fucking gameplay, everything, and add in a fucking parry mechanic that makes the game even ten times fucking awesome. 
Boy, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you talk about. We got this shit. We Capcom, baby. We don't we don't do it. We don't play games. We just do it. <laughs> it is so fucking awesome. They even do things with the story that I didn't even think of. I didn't even think to to the biggest issue that the original Resident Evil 4 game had was that the story just feels so like nonsensical that you didn't even realize that it doesn't really connect into Resident Evil mainline and tree that well until 5. Resident Evil 4 Remake says, nah, we're going to actually fix this story. And they make the coolest changes and smart changes throughout the whole entire story. And it was it's just awesome, man. And up to this day, I still go back and play it. I still think it's an amazing game. And I just can't keep stop gushing about this game. This is like peak fucking Resident Evil, man. And I feel so bad. And I said it before in my in one of my other videos, you know, my critique video. I feel very bad for the fucking people that has to work on the next Resident Evil game because they gotta top this shit. They gotta find a way to top this. And I don't think they can, man. I don't think they can. But this game is fantastic from beginning to end. Thank you, Capcom, for making a great ass remake and again showing why you guys are one of the best video game companies, man. Shout outs to Capcom, baby. The only reason, the only reason the game is not game of the year for me is because there was another game that touched me even more so than this game. But it also is a remake. So I can't give it that much body points because they already had homework. They already had homework that they that they had to cop they could copy off of, you know. So I can't give it that much credit, but it's still a great game. Like no holds bar. If this game that I'm about to announce didn't come out in 2023, I probably would have given this to Resident Evil 4. But speaking of my game of the year, let's talk about it. The game of the year. Game of the year. Let's do drum rolls. Drum rolls, please. Spider-Man 2 is my personal game of the year. I mean, motherfuckers, you had to have known this shit was coming, all right? Like, if anybody who's actually talked to me or followed me on fucking Twitter or, or just interacted me, on a, on a daily basis, you would know I fucking enjoyed Spider-Man 2 so much. I love this game. And granted, the game's not perfect. You know, I'm just going to be very brutally honest. Spider-Man 2 is a rush game. You know, Spider-Man 2's missing features, you know, the story near the end, I feel, is very rushed. And up to this day... Up to this day, there is still no new game plus. And I would even go as far as to say Resident Evil 4 Remake and, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 are better games than Spider-Man 2. However, however, when I look at Spider-Man 2 and every time I think about it up to this day, I always say to myself, wow, this game may not have been the Arkham City game I was looking for, for a Spider-Man sequel, but my god, does it leave a lasting impression on me, that it gave me the Spider-Man experience I always wanted. This game, through and through, whether that be through music, whether that be through the web swinging, the combat, the, the, the costumes, Every single ounce of this game gives me that Spider-Man feeling and experience that I always wanted. And it, it, and they just elevate certain aspects of the game. And it's ballsy. They take ballsy risks, like having continuing the MJ missions, you know, removing certain gadgets. You know, they could rely on their moral, on their morals, but every single minute. This game always was making me say, I can't wait to put back on the costume. I can't wait back, can't wait to be Spider-Man. You know, Arkham uh, Knight has this 
great phrase in the commercial, which was "Be the Batman." Motherfucker, Spider in the Spider-Man Two, you be the Spider-Man. All right, <laughs> like every single minute through, through, through combat and even through side mission, you are Spider-Man, and it feels so rewarding. It feels so great. And no game I've played this year, not even Resident Evil Four, has really given me that feeling of being this hero. You know, and I, again, it's not a fair comparison, but none of these games have left that impression up to this day, minus maybe Resident Evil 4, where I was just like, man, I can't wait to jump back into it. Man, I can't wait to just web swing around the city. Man, I can't wait to get back into the story and analyze these characters and why they, they are saying and doing what they're doing. Man, I just can't wait to be Spider-Man again. It's as it's a nagging feeling. This game leaves me with the most nagging, funnest experience where it's just like, man, I just want to be more Spider-Man. I just want to play this even more. And it's a, it's a testament to how fucking incredible Insomniac Studio is that that even though they were crunching or the game didn't live up to the par of what they really wanted to, that they made a fun ass fucking game that you constantly want to go back to or at least me i constantly am thinking and driving to come back to spider-man 2 because it nails when it nails all its aspects when it nails those aspects it is a treat when it has cool reveals and shocking reveals it is the coolest shit man and i just can't stop thinking about the game and for me that to me makes a great game when it leaves you with that impression of like man you are just thinking about it and you're just having the time of your life there were many moments where i just shouted out Woo or hell yeah <laughs> so many times that's how you know you feel in this game and to me this is why it's my favorite game of 2022 it's my game of the year because it always lived up to that essence of being Spider-Man. And with all that being said, that is going to do it for the video. If you're new to the channel, please comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know what was your top five or favorite video game of 2023. And I will be sure to get back to you in the comment sections. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate. Signing out, have a good one, more videos are coming very, very soon.